like, let me get over here. <laughs> I'm so used to just being on the other side <laughs> that it's weird. Hello, hello! Welcome to my bare bones kitchen. But as you can see, it is not my bare bones kitchen tonight. It is my lovely friend Nicole's kitchen. And we are doing salmon and rice pilaf. So I've done a salmon video before. I generally do salmon the exact same way every single time. Today, Nicole is gonna show us a different way of doing salmon. Plus she's throwing in rice pilaf. And, and, wait for it, we have a dessert. So, cheers all. Welcome to Nicole's Bare, Bone Ki Bare Bones Kitchen because that's how we're rolling tonight. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the, the rice pilaf, which I probably should have my pan on. And she has a cool gas stove, so it won't take long. <laughs> I'm not that high tech. I wish I was, but I'm not. So I learned something new, partially from Harmony, but also partially from the internet that I actually thought that rice pilaf meant it had almonds in it, <laughs> but it's actually a preparation method of rice being cooked in broth and with vegetables. So um, my daughter actually asked me a few weeks ago if I would make rice pilaf for her and I hadn't really done it before other than in a rice cooker. And so I made it up and now I'm showing it to you. She is so good at keeping a recipe journal for the things that she plays with. I suck at that kind of stuff. I really do just suck at it and that's okay that's why we have the internet right so if you have something that you want to make and you don't know how to make it you can just google it or you can go to my page guys sometimes I make stuff sometimes so the first so thing we're gonna do is saute some just some regular sweet onion that I've diced up and we're just sauteing them in butter and how much butter did you use? I don't know, right however about. much I felt like, maybe about... Uh, Filling it with your soul, I love it. A couple tablespoons-ish. Beautiful, love it. <clears throat> and then I add a little bit of Johnny's to it, because um, I guess this would be my equivalent of Garlic Weber for Harmony, <laughs> is this is like my salt and pepper, that's why I buy it from Costco, <laughs> and it's low. <laughs> and I'm sure some of you are huge Johnny's fans. Or Lowry's, I don't know. Throw it up there. Are you a Lowry's or are you a Johnny's? So the other thing that we're going to do, we're gonna add some garlic to this as well. Um, don't wanna add the garlic too soon, otherwise it will burn. So we got the onions just about sauteed and then after we add our garlic, we're gonna throw in some rice and Orzo. Orzo looks kind of like rice, but it is a pasta. And so with your saute of your onions, again, you're just going for that translucent look. And you do want to be careful with the garlic because otherwise it will turn really bitter in your food and you don't want to do that. This is just a little nifty garlic mincer tool I got when I used to sell Pampered Chef. Just about a a clove or so and I'm super messy I'm not clean like Hermione I just throw it all over the place <laughs> all right but Nick has all the cool tools that I don't have <laughs> so um, one thing about the the rice and the orzo is um, the brown rice needs to be rinsed get some of that extra starch off of the rice uh, same thing when you're cooking quinoa, you should rinse it through until the liquids run. So that was the brown rice, this is the orzo, it's about a cup each. And so you rinse the brown rice, but you don't rinse the orzo. No, you don't need to rinse it. You can rinse the orzo, it wouldn't hurt. Um, but it definitely makes a difference with the brown rice, whether you're making it in a rice cooker or on the stovetop. Uh, brown rice and quinoa both should be rinsed really well before cooking. And again, that just takes the starches off, guys. Just takes the starches off. So all we're doing here is we're toasting the rice that's in there until it's just a little bit golden brown. And then throwing rice all across the stove. I throw stuff all the time, please. Um, Did you not see the soup video where I dropped the whole bowl in there? That was a party foul, though. I'm just going to throw it out there. That was my lemon <laughs> drop I just spilled all over. <laughs> Oops. It happens, guys. It happens. 
And she hasn't even drank any of it. That's the worst part. <laughs> I was too nervous. <laughs> Maybe I should have drank it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's all right, though. All right. So our pasta is toasted and turning golden brown. And then this is what really makes it the rice peel off is cooking it in the broth. So this is about four-ish cups of broth to the two cups of rice and pasta. And you could use all two cups of brown rice or all two cups of the orzo. Um, you don't have to use half and half. This is just what I used and I thought worked. So once I add the broth, and then I'm just going to add some seasonings, and then I also have um, some diced green onion I'm going to add to it as it starts to boil a little bit. And Nicole added chicken stock. You could absolutely do vegetable stock or beef stock or whatever works for your lifestyle. Um, you just got to do you. Remember that. This is a um, garlic and herb, a little different than the, the Weber, but um, I actually learned about this from Harmony when she catered my 40th birthday party a few-ish years ago. Not really 40. We're like 22 plus experience. That's all we are. Yeah, that's right. And then I've got um, some basil, just some dried basil, and, you know, just whatever you feel like throwing in there. Some Italian seasoning. Kind of make it almost a little soup seasoning. I also have some um, Williams Sonoma soup base. Um, this isn't necessary. This is just a, a seasoning that I really like that I put in a lot of my soups. Um, and it just adds some flavor to, to the broth. So just a, a dash of that. Um, a similar equivalent would be like a ground bouillon. You could use a better than bouillon instead. Um, this is more like a spice seasoning that I just like to so add. So it really just kind of makes it a little bit more rich. Mm -hmm. Rich exactly. in flavor. That would okay. be a great, great way. So we're just going to let that simmer um, for a little bit. And then as it starts to uh, bubble, we're going to turn it down, put the lid on it, and just let it sit there until all of that, that pasta and rice um, absorbs the liquid. Are we putting a lid on it? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <clears throat> See? See? Sometimes people got tricks I don't know, guys. Sometimes. <laughs> and so you're putting the onions, the green onions in now? Mm hmm As opposed to like right at the end? Yep. Okay. So it'll cook with the broth. But you don't want to saute them. You just let them cook with I was the just broth. thinking the color-wise. Oh. Color-wise, they're going to be not quite as bright and vibrant. Nope. But, all right. Alright, you could do it, but you could wait till the end, it doesn't really hurt. Um, and then you can always save a little for the end for your garnish as well. Beautiful. Or you could add parsley. Parsley would also be another great That's option as well. So I'm just moving everything out of the way so we can start our salmon preparation. Going for the salmon, going for the salmon. Are we going to do that here? We're going to do that there. Why don't we move this over here a little okay. bit, just so that it's not... Oh, it's been so long since I've used a gas stove. Look at that. Can we go medium? Um, yeah, that's good. We want to wait till that starts to bubble, right. and then we'll turn it down and put the lid on. Perfect. <clears throat> so, much like rice, bringing it to a boil, dropping it down. Hello, Chad. How are you? All right. So now we're going to prep our salmon. We've already pulled the pin bones, which Harmony showed you in one of her other videos how to do that. So we went ahead and did that this time. Um, I like to pat my salmon dry and just get all of the extra condensation off of the salmon before I start seasoning it. And then, um, I'm not used to having to explain stuff to people. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a difficulty, I agree. So I'm just going to start with, after I pat it dry, I just add a little bit of salt and pepper and then Worcestershire and then we're going to layer from there. So this is just a little bit of salt. 
a little bit of pepper. And then a little bit of Worcestershire. Just kind of drizzle it on there. I probably put more than most people would. Easy hand, guys. Easy hand. <laughs> it is salty, so yes. you have to keep that in mind, especially with your other salt. That's why I just, say easy hand. <laughs> just a tad bit of the Johnny's again. Like I said, I kind of put this in everything. Um, that's my salt and pepper. And then I actually use the butter and put packs of it on top. Um, this is probably, I don't know, four tablespoons-ish, maybe three-ish <laughs> um, of butter for that filet. That filet would feed um, about two people-ish, um, depending on how hungry they are and how old they are and whether how much testosterone they have. <laughs> Can you tell Nicole has a son that's not any longer like eight <laughs> my son is 20 he'll be 20 in a couple weeks this is one of my favorite seasonings it's actually discontinued it's a, also from williams sonoma it's a base seafood seasoning i put it in my salmon chowder i can guarantee i have every single last jar in the country <laughs> so um you won't be able to find it sorry you'll have to find an alternative <laughs> do you know of an alternative I don't. I have tried. I have tried replicating it, and I've tried finding a substitution, and okay. I have not yet. So. What about Old Bay? Does that work? No. No. Okay. All right. See. <laughs> Learning. Learning. Not. Not for the flavor that I'm going for, anyway. Um, so then we're gonna just mince some garlic on top of that as well, and then from there. <laughs> it's okay. Um, they don't care. They're used to the mess, Nick. It's okay. After I squeeze the garlic on, then I lose stuff all over my kitchen. I don't know where the three knives I've had before. <laughs> I love it. Hey, this is live. This is real. This is how, this is how it is in my kitchen. <laughs> Just mince some garlic on top. You were looking for perfection. You came to the wrong station. That is true. I promise it'll taste good in the end. That I, that I can pretty much guarantee. And then, after I mince the garlic over top of the salmon, I will drizzle some honey. And then we'll dress it with these oranges, lemons, and onions. So this is more of a citrus-based salmon but you also have to be very careful about putting citrus on top of your salmon because <laughs> you uh, citrus is actually really great flavor um i should have had this open apparently um for fish but if you put it on too soon or put too much of it on um it will actually cook the salmon and make it tough and rubbery so if you're using any kind of citrus based um marinade or you're putting lemons or oranges or whatever kind of citrus you want to add to your, yep. um, you just want to make sure you don't let it sit on it for, before you start cooking it. Otherwise, it'll start cooking before you want it to. It's actually a chemical reaction, guys. So you have to be very, very careful when you're putting the citrus-based stuff with the salmon because there's a chemical reaction that actually cooks the salmon. So be very careful. Hello, Sarah. Chad says, if you don't make a mess while you cook, then where's the fun in that? <laughs> as long as I have somebody else to clean it up, it's great. <laughs> and Sarah wants to know if that's Boss Bees, honey. It is. Look at that. It is. She loves that. So Do you I'm know just... that Bob's Bees actually lives in my apartment complex? No, I did not yes. know that. <laughs> yes, I see his German Shepherd many mornings. Many mornings. So I have a couple more fillets that I'm dressing, so I have some extra oranges and lemons, but this is this is how we dressed it up. Um, and this will actually be wrapped in foil, um, and it's going on the grill. I have my grill started, it'll go on the grill. We'll post pictures later. Um, 
Another uh, thing that I like to do with this while it's cooking uh, that we won't have a chance to show you. Can you turn that yes, down and absolutely. stir it real quick and uh, add the lid? Absolutely. Perfect. I'm like, Just grab another one. I'm like, where did it go? Uh, Erica's always asking me, how many spoons do you use? Well, today? you know, it's like, whatever, right? Whatever. Um, while this is cooking, partway through, I'll open it up and maybe baste it if, the, if all of the juices are towards the bottom and not on the top of the salmon just so that it gets some of that butter and seasoning on top of the salmon. Then towards the end of the cooking, like in the last five to eight minutes or so, I actually open up the foil and let it bake without it being covered. And it takes some of that honey that's on it and just kind of caramelizes it over top of the salmon and gives it a really nice flavor. Um, so does it glaze eating. it then? Makes it, it does not kind of, glaze. Um, because of the sugars in the honey. Um, it's not as sticky as you would think for some glazes because of the amount of butter and then the juices from okay. the citrus. Okay. Um, but it does kind of give it a little bit of a glaze. Very uh, nice. So yeah, it's great. So super simple, really salt, pepper, uh, butter, garlic, and whatever citrus you want. And then it's just kind of a fun presentation with the um, onion rings, rounds, and um, oranges and lemons. So you've got that. And we'll put that on the grill. I'm so excited, guys. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. His dog is huge. And she said that, Sarah said that his whipped honey butter is the bomb diggity. All right. I'll yeah. Check that out. Yeah. He's, his dog is so sweet, though. Like, I'll be outside in the morning because I'm always up at weird times. Okay. I'm always up at weird times. So I'll see his dog sometimes. And that dog does not even <clears throat> flinch. Like, not even flinch, which is really funny for me because he's a German Shepherd, and that's actually why I have this little scar on my forehead, is because when I was, like, four, I uh, decided I wanted to pet my aunt's friend's dog, and he was underneath the stairs, and I pulled his tail, and my aunt was screaming. I literally remember this. My aunt was screaming, Harmony Jean, do not pull the dog tail. He's going to bite you. Yeah. So, went in for some stitches. German Shepherds. Yeah. It scared me. I was a, a terrified of dogs for the rest of my life. Until I got a Rottweiler, because that's just how I roll. <laughs> I'll go from one scary dog to another, right? That's just how I did it. How I did it. He was a trained police dog. Yes, he was, Sarah. Or Sue. Sue. See, I saw Sarah. Didn't realize Sue was up here, too. Hello, Sue. Sue McLeod. You gonna say hello to Sue McLeod? Hi, Sue. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So now we're moving on to dessert, guys. Dessert. So what I have here. Wait, wait, wait. Of course, Nick has the cool trifle bowl because that's how she rolls. Okay. I would not have one of those. It would look like a pile of trash because I would do it in a pan. Um, so you can actually be super creative, even if you just have a Pyrex bowl, you could put it in a Pyrex bowl, just any kind of clear kind of container. Clear okay. Um, and you don't have to put it all in one. You can make individual ones. So I have even just used clear plastic cups. Beautiful. Love so, it. So, I mean, it works. Whatever you have, just use it. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. So what I have here is, this is just, I made a... Devil's Food Cake Mix out of box, um, Betty Crocker. Um, you could use whatever you want. You could bake a cake from scratch if you wanted to. You could buy a cake at the store. You could use brownies instead. I poked holes in it and poured Kahlua over it. She poured Kahlua over it. Did you get that? So we're just gonna layer this with some of these cubes of cake. So she cooled it and then cut it into cubes after pouring the Kahlua over it, right? Okay. Um, the recipe <laughs> calls for recipe. <laughs> a cup of Kahlua. There's she didn't do a cup. <laughs> there's a little more than a cup in there. <laughs> I love being the commentator. That's so much more fun. <laughs> And this is just um, chocolate pudding. Again, same thing. You could buy pudding already made. You could do, use pudding cups. You have pudding cups in your cupboard? Do that. You need to throw together a quick dessert. You can. You you have what you need. You could bake, uh, bake, cook pudding from scratch, or you, who like, in the hell cooks pudding from scratch? <laughs> oh. Especially when you're making pie, it's necessary when you're making pie. Apparently, she doesn't know I don't make pie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Which is sad, because I've known Nick since I was, what, 15? <laughs> well, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to your fans. Well, oh, you know. you're right. You're right. You're totally right. <laughs> right now, they're your fans, too. Yuck. <laughs> so you can have a lot of fun. Just um, This is just cake pudding and um, whipped cream, or Cool Whip. I love that she's so messy, just like me. I'm super messy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm nervous. Um, and then you could add some fudge in here and drizzle that over top of the Cool Whip, or you could put some Heath bars in there. You could crush up uh, some your favorite chocolate, or you could um, put chocolate chips in there. I mean, whatever you wanted to throw in there, that sounds good. Fresh fruit, caramel. Oh, caramel, that would be fun. Just remember, I mean, with the cake, we have the Kahlua flavor in it, so something that you think would go with that um, Kahlua. And then you can just, just keep layering this it will be beautiful and quick and easy and people will be odd guys because that's what people do that's what we as humans do like you can make take like the easiest peasiest thing and make it kind of look fancy and everybody's like oh my gosh that's so pretty no joke I'm not even telling stories here I have absolutely witnessed this 10,000 times and if you remember a few months ago when I was on the boat I actually told my lovely friend, Wonderful, it's so easy to awe people. And she said, what do you mean? I said, go look at the food that they're presenting on this awesome trip around Lake Washington. She did. And she goes, oh my gosh, all of that is on your channel. I go, I know. I know this, man. Because we're just easy to please. You put it on a plate with some green onions and make it look pretty. People are like, oh, it's crazy. It's true. Um, when I used to sell Pampered Chef, and when I did that, they told us that 80% of people eat with their eyes first. Absolutely. So they decide whether they like it or not when they first see it, and that's, that's part of the presentation is a lot of eating. And so you could have fun with this. I do have lots of tools I could use. I could pipe this on, make a fun design. Um, on top of the Cool Whip, Cool Whip is so much fun, or whipped cream. Just because it's white, you can add any kind of like powder. You could do cocoa powder. You could do a espresso powder. You could um, put some chocolate curls on top and it would look really pretty. Um, you could just um, take chocolate chips and crush them with a hammer and sprinkle them over top if that's what, all you have. Um, and it still would look super pretty and it would look fancy and look like you spent a lot of money on it even though you didn't. And a lot of hours. Yeah. Look, dessert's done. Boom. Just like that. <laughs> I like Cool Whip. <laughs> cool Whip's the friend. And that's it. We will post pictures of everything at the end. We're going to throw the salmon on the grill. And just for good measure, I also made dinner rolls from scratch because I needed Harmony and Chad to try them. Because, <laughs> of course, you know, Chad's coming with. He'll be here any minute. And... That's just how we roll here in Bear Boat's Kitchen, because that's what happens when you're a bachelor and you know somebody that cooks. And lucky for him, he knows somebody that cooks that also knows somebody that cooks. So thank you, Nicole, for joining us in your Bear Bones Kitchen. Look at that beautiful dessert, you guys. How pretty. See? I just easily amused. Time. Easily amused, guys. Easily amused. Sarah says, yum, looks so delicious, and Sarah should try them, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, love you. See you on, what day are we on? We're going on Wednesday. Thank you, Nicole. Make sure that you share this video. Um, I do not have the giveaway tonight, so it's going to have to be Wednesday, and it may be at Sarah's house. I don't know yet. Sorry, I, I haven't read Sarah's message yet, so it may be at Sarah's house, but I may be doing the giveaway at Sarah's house, and... Yeah, see you on Wednesday.